Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD Sub of Book 4. Today, guys, we'll do my Europa League predictions of the round of 16, guys. I want to know your guys' predictions in the comments below. Please run and hit that like early like button, guys. Hit that early subscribe button, guys. Helps the channel grow, guys. And yeah, man. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first match right here, guys. So we have Roma versus Brighton. This is a matchup that I think is really fascinating. It's so interesting because this Roma team under De Rossi is actually playing really good football. Because under um, to, um, Mourinho, they were not playing great football. They were playing defensive, counterattacking football. And we know Brighton is a very good team that are possession-based under De Zerbe. And what makes this very fascinating is that both these teams have kind of not performed as, as, as well as they can. We know the expectations for it, you know. And I just think for Brighton in particular, this is a huge task for them. Because they're having to play against a Roma team. And, you know, and they have some injuries concerns. I think one of the key issues I have with Brighton is the lack of depth they have. And I think defensively, they look a bit sketchy. A deserve you know. And it's difficult to call a winner for this one, but I had to make a prediction. And I have to go with Brighton. Because as good as Roma are, I feel like for me, Roma is just, they don't have enough quality for me. I don't think Roma have enough quality compared to Brighton. I think Brighton is just a better team all around and i just feel like roma just have the better individual players but i think brighton actually are better as a collective unit than roma so for that reason i have brighton to advance but who knows roma could definitely do it i wouldn't be surprised i think um it's gonna be tight this one next up it is um spar prog versus liverpool spar prog man like shout out to spar prog because what they did in the group what they did in the against galatas was commendable the fact that they managed to obliterate Galatasaray 4-1 is amazing. And that Presido guy is such a brilliant full fullback. I mean, the guy was scoring screamers. I mean, the guy was unbelievable. And then their striker, Kuchita, I think it is. Uh, he was also fantastic. Scored the header as well. And what makes the Sparrow Prague team is so good is they're very good in the counterattack. They're very, very good in the counterattack. And I just feel so bad for them that they're playing against Liverpool, a team that have looked rejuvenated this season. Liverpool looks like they mean business this season. They're not here just to mess around, you know. And with Jurgen Klopp announcing his departure at the end of the season, the players seem more hungry than ever, seem more motivated. They seem like they want to do it for Jurgen Klopp, you know. And I just think that for Liverpool in particular, what's very amazing with them is the fact that they have this determination. Even with all the injuries, with the whole injury crisis they have, they're still able to manage to find ways to get the win. I mean, look at the fact that they beat Chelsea with a very much, uh, very much inexperienced eleven compared to Chelsea with their experience eleven. So I just think for Liverpool, man, it's very, very fascinating for me. Now I will say this though for Liverpool is that how much the injuries are going to affect this one? Are they going to just push the Europa League out the window and just go all in for the Premier League and the uh, the FA Cup? Because if I'm Jurgen Klopp, I want to go for all trophies. I think Jurgen Klopp should you should go all in for all trophies because I just think for me this is such a great season to potentially win a quadruple. And it would be amazing. So it's a difficult one to call because I don't know how Liverpool are going to prioritize this. Because if Liverpool do not prioritize this, then Spar Prague have a great chance. Because Spar Prague, we know, are very good in the counterattack and everything. What makes me concerned for Spar Prague is the second leg is at Anfield. The second leg is at Anfield. And that is what makes it very concerning. Is that can Spar Prague manage to get a result at Anfield? I don't know. I would probably say no. So for Spar Prague, if they want to advance, they have to win the home game. They simply have to win the home game. Because if Liverpool gets a draw, wins there, or Spar Prague narrowly wins, Liverpool is going to take care of business secondly. Because Anfield is just that fortress and that atmosphere. So what do I think for this one, guys? I think Liverpool is going to do it. I just think that Liverpool, for me, they just have too much quality. You know, you have Salah there. You have uh, Gakpo there as well. Then you have Dorna Nunes, then Endo. You know, Van Dijk. I mean, there's just so much quality with this Liverpool team. It would be, I would be surprised Liverpool goes out this early. So, yeah, Liverpool to make it to the next round. Next one we have here, it is Milan versus Sparpra. Milan, man, they are looking fantastic as a team. They're looking amazing. That attacking front line they have is incredible. Giroud, Pulisic, Chakwesi, Liao, it's stacked. Then you also have um, in the midfield as well, Musa. That's also been amazing. Loftus Cheek as well. Reinders is there. My only concern with Milan is defensively look very shaky. Defensively they look very, very shaky. And we saw against Renz and how defensively weak they were. As for Slavia Prague, this is a team that's very good in the counterattack. This team is a very good counterattacking team. Uh, they have some dangerous players. I think um uh their top score, I think uh it's like um 
hopefully let me just get the name up real quick uh, just to make sure i know this name uh let me just make sure i pronounce his name correctly slavia praha yeah it's like chitel chitel is the guy i was talking about that guy is like a fantastic player and I just think for Slavia problem, man, what makes them very, very interesting is how they were, they they defeated uh, Roma in the group stage. They defeated Roma in the group stage and actually managed to top the group ahead of the Italian team. So they already got experience playing against the Italian team, but they're going to be playing against another Italian team. So for Milan, let's be real, they should be doing this. They're the heavy favorites. I'd be surprised if Milan don't do this. Milan should be making the next round of the Europa League. Moving on, we have Sporting versus Atalanta. This is the huge matchup of the round, man. And we already saw this matchup took place in the group stage where Atalanta actually triumphed and actually managed to get four points against Sporting. Sporting this season has been amazing. Ruben Almarine has done a fantastic job with the team. The team is looking amazing. They're doing so well. I believe they're actually top of the uh, the, Portug uh, the Portugal Liga. Actually, let me just quickly just double check here. Are they top of Portugal Liga at this current moment? Because that's uh, very, very interesting. Let me just check that right there real quickly. Sporting... Uh, I believe they're top, right? No, no, sorry. They're second place. Only two points behind Benfica. And I look at Sporting in particular, man. They're in a great position to win the league. They're in a really, really good position to win the league. You know, and I just think for Sporting, man, what makes them so good is that that, that striker, Gokorez. That Gokorez guy is unbelievable. He's just been that goal score machine for Sporting. Because I saw Sporting, how good they were last season in the Europa League and how lethal they were in front of goal. How, how good they were. It's just they needed a striker. And a lot of the season have also been great, you know, pragmatic style. Gasparini has done a good job with the team. And it's it's a very vasty one because both these teams have some tough fixtures ahead. In fact, there's a lot of fixture congestion. I believe this game is actually going to take place on a Wednesday instead of the original Thursday, which is actually interesting. So my issue with sporting, though, is that are they going to be prioritizing this or are they going to go on for the league? Because in my opinion, I think they're going to go on for the league. I think Ruben Almarine you got to go in for the league because this is too hard. To win this Europa League is going to be very difficult. And I just think for Adelanta, man, they have some great players. Obviously, Zapata comes to mind. And obviously, they have some good players and here and there. And I just think for Sporting, man, it's just hard to see with this one. Because I feel like if Sporting prioritizes this and actually go all in for the Europa League, then they can't do this. But if Sporting rotate and not take this as seriously and prioritize the league, then I don't think they can do this. So, you know what, guys? I'm actually going with an upset here. I think Atalanta is actually going to do this. I'm mainly going with this because of the fact I don't think Sporting is going to prioritize this. I think they're going to actually go more focused on the league. And I think they're going to treat this as a side competition. But if on the basis they actually go all in for this, then they do. And then, you know, I could see them doing it. But I just don't see. I just, just feel like they're going to. I just think they're going to go all in for the league. So, I think they're going to sacrifice this and go in. But, yeah, this is a tough one, though. This can go either way. Next up is Freiburg versus West Ham. Another matchup we saw in the group stage, man. We know how good this Freiburg team is. And we saw that remarkable comeback they did against Lons at home. It was fantastic, man. Gregoritsk and Greg Gre Grifo scoring the goals. And this Freiburg team is so underrated. You have to give a lot of credit to Strike because he's done a fantastic job with the team. The team is galvanized. The team is playing such a well unit. They're playing that counterattacking style. And it's just amazing to see what this Freiburg team is capable of doing. West Ham, though... They haven't been great recently. They've been in terrible form uh, recently. David Moyes has been under a lot of criticism. The defensive has been looking very shaky. Mohamed Kudos has been uh, fantastic. Of course, Jerem Bowen as well. And my issue with West Ham is that defensively looking very sketchy because I believe because they they conceded a six at home to Arsenal. That's insane. Losing a 6-0 at home to Arsenal is disgraceful. You know, and defensively they're looking very shaky. That being said, I still think West Ham are the favorites here. I just think that West Ham for me have too much firepower. And I just feel like for me, they're just more of a complete team than Freiburg because West Ham also have um, Edson Alvarez as well. They also have um, Aguirre as well. You know, they have, they're such a well-rounded team. And I just think for Freiburg in particular, man, I just think it was, I, I you got to give them credit for what they did against Lons, but I just think West Ham wouldn't do that position. I don't think West Ham will blow that kind of position that Lons did. So I think West Ham is going to do this and I think they move on to the next stage. Next up, it is quarterback versus Leverkusen. Shout out to quarterback. This is the first time we're seeing an Azerbaijan team and the round of 16 of a European competition. It's a remarkable, fantastic achievement. And I want to give a ton of credit to this team because this is a team that many of us thought they would lose to um, uh, Braga. And the fact that they managed to beat Braga away in Portugal and just about lose against them at home, but it didn't matter the end and they scored the last minute to break Braga's hearts. This Leverkusen team, though, is unbelievable. This Leverkusen team... There is an argument that can be made that this is the best team in the world. 
this is the best team in the world. With the way they're playing, with the way that Xabi Alonso has got this team, this team is playing some beautiful attacking football. Grimaldo, Frimpong, Boniface, Kosunu, Radecki. This team is unbelievable. Stack, Xhaka as well. And I just think for quarterback, man, this is going to be too hard for them. It's going to be very, very difficult. The only way I can see quarterback do this is if Bayer Leverkusen like completely use their D team or like put the worst possible eleven, because there is no way I could see Bayer Leverkusen not do this. I'm sorry, Bayer Leverkusen, they're going to be blowing out quarterback. We saw how they did in the group stage, and it's just, it's just, I just feel really bad. I will get say this though, quarterback did put up a great fight against uh, Leverkusen, I believe at home, and I think it was only a one nil one for Leverkusen. But keep in mind, Leverkusen did rotate. So I just think for Leverkusen, man, they're the heavy favorites. They should be able to move on. And for quarterback, man, I feel really bad because this is a very difficult matchup. Next up is Marseille versus Villarreal. This is what I call the two disappointments of the season. Marseille this season have been very, very underwhelming. This season, they have been shocking. And by the way, guys, I am thinking about doing a video about this club in a few days' time. So... Uh, it's going to be interesting. But anyways, I'll say that for that video. Marseille this season have been shocking. Aubameyang has been carrying this team. This team has been so, so underwhelming. This team, because I look at the talent pool this team has. You have the likes of, um, um, you have the likes of, um, uh, Aubameyang there. You also have, um, uh, and Bemba as well. You know, you have some quality players here and there. And this team is still playing very bad. And Dia as well. Villarreal this season have been sh have been shocking. Defensively, they're shambles. Attacking wise, they could score a lot of goals, but defensively, they're very much shambles. It is a very difficult matchup to call because both these teams are super inconsistent. But I am going to tip to one team, and this team I just think has the edge because of this player, Aubameyang. I just think Aubameyang for me is just that big difference maker for Marseille, and he is the all time leading goal scorer in the Europa League. And I just think him with him, there's a chance. See, if Marseille didn't have a bombing, I would be very worried for them. So, Marseille, I am going to go for them to advance, but man, it's going to be tight. I could see this go to extra time, potentially even penalties. And so, Marseille, you better win at France because if you're going to have, if you're going to, if you have to go into a situation where you have to win in Spain, that's going to be tricky. That's going to be tricky. So, Marseille, I'm going to go for them to advance, but man, that's tight. The final match we got here is Benfica versus Rangers. Guys, I'm sorry to say, Benfica were abysmal against Toulouse. They were abysmal. Across both games, I was unimpressed. This Benfica team looked very, very underwhelming. I was so uninspired. And I look at this team that the the talent pool this team has. You have Di Maria. You have Trubin. You have Otamendi, a World Cup winning center back. You have a world. You have two World Cup winners here in your team. And you're telling me this is how Benfica did it? They just about managed to scrape a 2-1 win against Toulouse on the, at home and managed to somehow escape from France with a nil-nil draw when Toulouse absolutely penetrated, dominated them. As for Rangers, this is a team that I've always I've always underestimated. This is a team that I've criticized, called them out. They were one of the te worst teams in the Champions League last season. But I think they're a Europa League team because this team in Europa League is something special. Because remember, guys, the last time they were in the Europa League, they made it all the way to the final. And they lost to Frankfurt on penalties. So you have to give Rangers a lot of credit because this Rangers team is fantastic. You know, you have players like Dressers, Cantwell, Butland as well. And this Rangers team is so, so well organized. And defensively, they're looking great. They're attack-wise as well. So this is a tricky one because I know a lot of people are probably going to pick Benfica here just because of the favorites and everything like that. Uh, because they have the bigger names, they have the bigger players. But I'm actually going with Rangers. I've been more impressed with Rangers than I have with Benfica this season. And I'm going to go with Rangers to advance. So that's my Europa League predictions for you guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. We should be in for a tasty round, man. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please run a like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.